So I've heard firsthand from patients, doctors, nurses, uh, and hospitals all around North Carolina about ongoing workforce challenges. Uh, I think we need to focus on preparing future healthcare workforce. For example, some Wake Forest Early College of Health and Sciences partners with Wake Tech Community College and Wake Med to provide students with hands-on experience, certifications, and even college credit. So in the House of Representatives, I led the Critical Health Care Careers Act. Uh, the bill would help community colleges prepare the next generation of healthcare workers. Students should have the opportunity to gain on-the-job experience to prepare them for careers in healthcare. So Dr. Swanee, what steps is your health system in Louisiana taking to offer new credentials and educational opportunities for workers to join the healthcare workforce? Thank you for that question. Um, I mentioned the MA Now program, which is one where we partner with our communities where there's high unemployment or underemployment to introduce uh, workers into the health system through the medical assistant uh, job. And then it's about upskilling, as Senator Cassidy has mentioned. Uh, we, we like to call it earn as you learn, uh, or the ladders. Uh, um, and then taking those MAs and then working with our community colleges to be able to, as they work, support them, give them free tuition to be able then to become LPNs, associate degrees. And then now we're working with our with our university partners for them to be able to have bachelor's degrees. So that story that Senator Cassie shared with us is, is exactly what we're trying to do by getting more entry level into healthcare and then being able to meet our healthcare needs. And it's a win-win across the board, right? We're leveraging the human capital of the state of Louisiana and Mississippi, um, but we're also giving people a living wage for them to raise their family. Thank you. Uh so in your, earlier in your testimony, I understand that you mentioned using non-physician providers like uh, CNAs, licensed practical nurses. Uh, do you agree that maintaining access to services delivered by non-physicians, such as testing, treatment, vaccinations at local pharmacies, you think that's an important part of addressing the healthcare workforce shortage? You know, medicine is a team. It's a team effort. Uh, physicians are a very important part of that team, but many other providers are also an extremely important part of that team, so I agree. Yeah. So what steps do you think institutions can take? I know you're from the Louisiana perspective, but as you think about all the way to North Carolina, um, what can institutions do to better prepare healthcare workers to serve patients outside of a traditional hospital setting? Um, I'm thinking in-home, telehealth, um, community health centers, or anything else? Yeah, health healthcare is shifting to outpatient. Uh, and one of the things we need to do is to be able to be innovative about how we care for more patients, and it's already been mentioned uh, at this committee, at lower cost settings. Uh, so as we can transition an inpatient stay to a home stay, if, as we can leverage a medical home model where we can have digital tools, telehealth tools, uh, to for a patient who may have stayed in the hospital three days, now it can stay two days. That obviously opens up more hospital beds to care for more acute patients, but it's also a more family patient friendly model as we transition to board this medical home model. So I, we would agree with that, and we currently are pursuing innovative models that we, we can do that. Thank you very much. I'd like to yield back to the ranking member.